Hi, this is Lisa Mae DeMacy with another Equus Film Festival web chat here with accomplished equestrian artist, Melody De Benedictus. Welcome, Melody. Well, welcome. Thank you for having me, Lisa. I really appreciate it. Melody, the creed written on your website says, lover of horses, the way they move, the way they speak, the way they drink and breathe the wind of freedom. Did this sentiment for horses, in particular wild mustangs that roam the West, inspire you to paint them having stepped away from your artistic gift in your mid twenties? I think so. Um, I've always had a passion for horses. I've been around horses since I was a child, but I went as, as I've had a huge gap with horses and with art as well um, for years until I really got my own horses when we lived in the East. And then when I came West, of course, that's when I was introduced to the wild Mustangs. And um, my first trip to the Samwash Basin, I was pretty much sold um, from that point forward. And that was 11 years ago and I've been painting them ever since. And uh, so I've, I'm kind of, I'm kind of stuck on them. I love, I love the energy. I love the wild. I love their surroundings it's 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 far beyond just the the wild mustang itself but the landscape and everything the openness and the freedom and the whole bit so yeah wonderful your festival your festival entry is run to water which is right behind you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and obviously it depicts a small herd of mustangs on the move could you yeah. tell us what inspired you to capture and paint this scene on campus. Yeah, this piece was from one of my trips last summer. Um, we pretty much toured all of Western Colorado and Northwestern Colorado and even Arizona. We went to the Salt River. Um, we hit the uh, Little Peons. We hit the San Wash Basin and a couple of other areas in between all that. And we were setting up, I have a little uh, tin can vintage RV called the a uh, little red roan is my second vintage RV that I travel in with murals painted around. And we were actually parking and getting set up on the range. And it was beginning to be dusk kind of hour. And we got in the car real quick and ran down to an area called Copper Creek or Copper Pond, I'm sorry. And, um, and there was just band after band after band coming wow. in for water. Wow. And the typical mode of them doing this, obviously, is they come in their bands and they run because they want to get in before predators they want to get in before other stallions bring bands through and so they're always running and so there was just all this dust and the lighting was beautiful and um so i just and i captured probably about 100 photos that afternoon wow. or evening and this was one of the photo references and so um the colors are just very i like a lot of vivid color the range has so much color um most artists do more of these earthy very soft but i, I really like to bring the color and the richness of the range out. Um, I think we were there in June, so it was still pretty, pretty nice. Um, it hadn't dried up com completely yet, uh, but the dust and the light was just really beautiful to watch yeah. them coming through, so. Nice. Um, your, advo your advocacy for the wild Mustangs is astounding. Do you find the people you meet in your travels are aware of the problems they face? Um, for the most part, no. Um, it was really interesting when I first came to the West and started painting the Wild Mustang, when I would go out and do shows and tours and different things, it was, it, it amazed me, honestly, how many people that actually live in this part of the country didn't even know we had Wild Mustangs or where they were even at, much less the issues that surround them. So for me, the ability to be able to go out and use the art and the music to really tell their story and then get into intimate conversation one-on-one -on -one and, and start addressing more of the issues that are so critical around them, it, I really feel like it's a, a very fortunate place for me to be, um, to, to use the art. You know, Carl and I play music out um, through most of the seasons. Not this year because of COVID. We haven't, our, our season was completely canceled. But normally when we go out and pl play music, I'll bring a painting or two if I don't oh, even nice. set up more. And so a lot of the times we're in the midst of an audience that is mostly tourists or people that are completely unawares of the Western frontier and the BLM and HMAs and AMLs and all that kind of stuff. And so it's really nice to, you know, play a couple of songs that are related to the wild Mustangs and then talk about a piece of art and, and then have people come up after our shows and come and ask questions and, and we get to talk some more and share some more and, and, and educate. Um, so this, mm -hmm. like I said, it's a real honor. I feel like to be able to do what we do. 
and it's fun too. So it's <laughs> wonderful. Um, is there anything else you'd like our audience to know about your work? Um, I have a studio here in northern New Mexico, and so if anybody's ever traveling, you're welcome to look me up, hook up with me. Um, I've got a lot of work here. Um, we're just looking forward to getting back on the road and and traveling and continuing to hit the HMA areas and the open range areas and continuing painting, continuing to write the music and tell their story. And, uh, and hopefully through that, you know, educate more people and bring more awareness, you, you know, we're at a critical mass point with the wild Mustang right now because they're being removed at higher rates than we've ever seen. Oh. Uh, we've got more wild Mustangs in holding than we've ever had. And so it's, it's really important more than ever, um, the role that these horses play, not just in the legacy for the West, but what they hold for our future as well is really critical. Um, they really help the landscape, um, they help our prairies and, and all that. And if they continue with these removals, we've seen a horrible year this year with fires. And some of this is because we've had a lot of horses and a lot of wildlife that's just not been able to help keep up with the land and, and take care of the land the way that they do best. So um, I just feel like at the, the longevity of the wild Mustang, it's really critical even for our own ecological purposes as well as their beauty. Um, so I think if I leave anybody with that through the, the art or the music, I would hope that when I, you know, present new paintings that the landscape and the horses together, they tell that story because it's a really important story to, um, to maintain and to make sure that we don't lose this in our history um, at present, not just in the story itself, but that they continue to live out their legacy um, for, for our future. Sure. So, any last words you'd like to offer to our audience? Um, visit my website at runninghorses.org. Um, I'm more interactive on Facebook and I just started an Instagram account. Um, so if people want to see my stuff and, and keep up with my shenanigans, that's mm -hmm. probably a more interactive place. The website is a little more limited. It's more just an informational page that talks about what I am, what I do, and, and the part that Carl plays as well with the music. So um, just stay encouraged in these crazy times and, and stay enthusiastic and, and find out how you can play your part to you know, protect the wild, the wild horses that are on the range at present. So. I think that's about it. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Thanks for chatting with us today. All right. I appreciate it. And I look forward to hopefully when you guys have some more festivals, I look forward to attending those. I've enjoyed the, the several that I've done over the last several years. And so I look forward to doing more. So hopefully our economy and our COVID situation opens up over the course of the next year and we can get back to, yeah. to life I as, hope so. as we can get. So yeah. appreciate it, Lisa. You guys have a great afternoon. Thank you. All right. Thank you.